to um, today's session. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of the people that are um, logged on to this um, session. Um, today we are going to have um, a couple of great uh, presentations in this room. Uh, so first I'm going to introduce uh, Mr. Taro Ubukawa and Mr. Hidenori Fujimura. Uh, Taro is a senior geospatial expert at the United Nations Geospatial Information Section since uh, 2019 and has been working for vector tile deployment in the UN. And this is his first POS4G meeting. Welcome. And Hidenori is from Geospatial Information Authority, the National Mapping Agency of Japan, and he's been working in the field of web mapping and he loves vector tiles, so um, welcome, welcome both of you. Uh, nice to see you here. Uh, I'm just removing myself from the session, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Khan, for your introduction. So let me try to share my screen. Thank you. Can you, can you see my slide? Yeah, we can see you, I think. Yes, then, yes let, then let's start. Uh, thank you, John, uh, for your kind introduction. So good morning and good afternoon and good evening to you all. Uh, I'm Taro Bukawa uh, from UN Geospatial Information Section, and I'm so happy to talk about our vector tile implementation effort. The title of my talk is Deployment of Open Source Vector Tile Technology with UN Vector Tile Toolkit. Uh, you can see the list of authors uh, from the United Nations and GSI Japan. They are my great colleagues and I'm really happy to work with them. Today, uh, I will talk the first part, then uh, Hidenori will talk at the latter half. Okay, then uh, let's get started. Okay, first introduction. Uh, let me first introduce my key idea, uh, geospatial information for better world. Uh, with open source GIS bundle. Uh, I started working for the United Nations since 2019. Uh, we now have the geospatial strategy for the United Nations uh, that emphasizes the effective, efficient, and universal use of geospatial information in support of UN activities for a better world. In addition, uh, I'm joining uh, in the UN Open GIS Initiative uh, aiming to identify and develop an open source GIS bundle for UN operations. Uh, UN Vector Tile Toolkit is a part of this initiative. And these two are important background of our efforts, so let me first uh, introduce it. Okay. Then uh, about UNVT or UN Vector Tile Toolkit. Uh, as we can see, at various occasions, uh, now a Vector Tile is a powerful tool powerful method to efficiently deliver our map product. So we are working on it. Uh, UNBT is a collection of open source uh, software uh, to produce, host, style, and optimize vector tiles for web mapping. Uh, Mr. Hidenori Fujimura uh, Hidenori, uh, started it in 2018. And uh, we have a lot of UNBT partners, not only from UN. Uh, its main goal uh, is to facilitate the production of vector tiles by public organizations uh, for their base map dissemination. Uh, this toolkit uh, is not like a single software, but it is uh, more like an assembly of script, uh, method, know-how, and uh, others. Okay. Then uh, here comes the main topic of my talk, uh, UNVT deployment effort in the United Nations. Our colleagues in UN Global Service Center in Brindisi, Italy, are providing geospatial information and services to UN colleagues, uh, including a lot of colleagues in the field mission. Uh, they are using the base map uh, made from both OpenStreetMap and UN internal data. Uh, we believe uh, we can support their work and contribute a lot. So our project aims to deploy an open source vector tile method in their geospatial op operations. Okay. 
And as I said, uh, the target uh, of this project is to deliver our base map uh, using vector tile. Both OSM data and UN source data are already stored in POSTIS database at UN Global Service Center. So our target is to efficiently develop vector tiles and keep them always updated. There are a number of UN mappers uh, who kindly edit OpenStreetMap of UN mission area every day. So for us, it is important to achieve frequent update of the vector tiles. Uh, we found that the combination of Node.js and the existing open source tools were crucial. Uh, for your easy understanding, uh, first I want to share what we made so far uh, within our project. Uh, number one, uh, we have the vector tile of the whole globe. Number two, uh, web map styles. And number three, a uh, vector tile server in, for internal use. Uh, the server is still in the development environment and we need to work more on the authentication process. Yeah. And I will share our experience in the following slide. Okay, first, at the vector tile production, uh, we are using open source tools. Main tool is Tipicanu, a great vector tile conversion tool by Mapbox. And we developed some Node.js script to realize vector tile production and update. From the source data, GeoJSON sequence is directly forwarded to Tipicanu. We do not use any intermediate files. Then uh, we get vector tiles in MB tiles format. Our conversion is done area by area, and we use SQL query to let PostGIS return the uh, data within the targeted area. And we use Node.js to edit attribution, zoom levels, and layer names of each records uh, before they go to Tipicanu. Uh, we use more than 800 spatial modules for data production, and conversion tasks are regularly done as a scheduled task uh, at our conversion server. Our method is open and uh, you can uh, see it at uh, our GitHub repository. Uh, address is written here, so uh, please feel free to have a look at them. And uh, regarding the product, uh, we have uh, 841 MB tiles covering whole globe, and it is about 150 gigabyte in total. Uh, if we combat the whole globe at once, uh, it would take 35 straight hours. But thinking about the priority area, uh, we update some part of the world daily and other regions are updated weekly. weekly. And uh, this uh, strategy also helps us to reduce the burden to the source server. So oh, this is one of the good way, I think. And then next, uh, about styling. Uh, many map libraries use a uh, style file based on the Mapbox style specification. So we have prepared style file based on that specification. At first, uh, we used Maptronic, uh, which is a great tool for easy styling. But as the number of layers increased, we now use Hokon or a human optimized config object notation to efficiently edit the style. Uh, style file can contain more than several 10,000 lines, and sometimes uh, it is hard to even confirm the list of style layers uh, without Hokon. So uh, we prepare a number of configuration files, uh, then we can just merge them to create a single style JSON. Uh, with Hokon, all configuration files can be edited with a text editor and understood by human uh, very easy. And some tips from our experience of styling. Uh, because our users may use our vector tiles in various applications, we have tried uh, our style in several map libraries and tools, uh, both uh, open source and uh, proprietary software. I am so happy to see a various tools now support the vector tile consumption. However, we found the necessity of customize uh, the style for each tool's library 
uh, because each of them understands style information in slightly different ways. Uh, we saw it uh, at advanced expression, color description, font reference, etc. So we do not have a lot of time today, but uh, please contact us if you are interested uh, in detail uh, about this. Okay, then at the next one, uh, at the hosting phase, uh, we also developed a simple vector tile hosting servers. Uh, if we have the vector tile in PDF format, uh, I think static hosting is good enough. And uh, we indeed sometimes uh, use GitHub homepage for other projects. Uh, but this time uh, we are using MB tiles format to efficiently manage a vector tiles uh, of huge sizes. And uh, we established a simple hosting server using Node.js Express. Uh, then hosting server delivers PBF files uh, derived from MB tiles. Uh, we also store the style, map symbols, text fonts, and others needed to draw our web maps. Uh, we still have our server in the development environment, uh, but for the future, we need to add some authentication. And we also work to add Azure AD authentication to our simple server. And these uh, efforts are also all update, uploaded to our GitHub uh, repository. Uh, next, a little bit of different topic. Uh, let me talk about the knowledge sharing. Uh, in order to share our vector tile techniques uh, with UN colleagues and the colleagues outside UN, uh, we had a series of workshops and exercises. Many of our colleagues use GIS, but some of them are not so familiar with vector tiles. So some of our exercise uh, material exercise were for beginners uh, with a lot of explanations. The slides and materials are released from the internet as much as possible so that our colleagues can learn our vector tiles activity and techniques. Uh, and uh, we have small announcement. On October 22nd, uh, we will have a workshop on UNBT storytelling. Uh, we can invite anyone. So uh, if you are interested in joining, uh, please contact me. Okay, okay uh, that is all from me. But before I hand over to Hidenori, uh, let me summarize uh, my, my part uh, first. Uh, uh, so far, I have shared our experiences of deploying a UN Vector Tile Toolkit uh, for Vector Tile Development Project. And second, I feel that making styling hosting Vector Tile is not that difficult uh, thanks to our open source tools. Uh, they are great. <laughs> and third, uh, if you are interested in our project, join us in our activities. Uh, thank you for your uh, attention. And then uh, I'm very happy to invite Hidenori uh, to show the latest UN Vector Tire uh, Toolkit example in other project. So Hidenori, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Talo. And uh, thank you, John, uh, for the session. And uh, yes, switching from New York to Tokyo, I'd like to introduce some expansion of UNVT project in Japan. So yes, we are working on several uh, project, what kind of sub-project uh, based on UN Vector Tile Toolkit. I would like to introduce three examples, OptoGeo, EV, and FTS. And first of all, I'd like to introduce OptoGeo project or Adopt GeoData project. This project is to adopt existing open geospatial data and uh, convert them into vector tiles because uh, there, is, there is a lot of very useful data, geospatial data, but uh, not yet uh, in the vector tile form. And I actually have 130 uh, repositories. Uh, most of them are really experimental, but uh, I am converting a lot of open geospatial data into vector tiles. And uh, yes, Taro, uh, could you move on to the next slide? And uh, yes, I would like to introduce two examples uh, of this Adopt Geodata project. Uh, first one is the adoption of the geospatial data actually from my organization, Geospatial Information Authority of Japan. We provide uh, topographic map data uh, and also we provide uh, landform classification data, but uh, it's 
still in experimental vector tiles or GeoJSON vector tiles. So I'm using a UNA vector tile toolkit uh, to make it a better one, uh, technically. And uh, I created uh, this example, which covers Shibuya uh, in Tokyo. And uh, this uh, covers, yes, this shows uh, some uh, land form uh, classification in this uh, area with uh, 3D uh, building data. Please, next to the next slide. And uh, some other example is uh, adoption of point cloud data. Uh, the Shizuoka Prefecture uh, in Japan is uh, kindly providing the, all the point cloud data uh, to the public as an uh, open data. And uh, I am trying to convert uh, this point cloud data into actually vector tiles, but, uh, which is in the form of the voxel data, uh, which is actually the uh, square data. Uh, polygon data, but uh, has the height information, and I visualize it uh, as a kind of voxel form. And uh, yes, uh, this is a really new project, but I am really satisfied that uh, we can see the power line uh, landing uh, in the yes, this voxel data. I think uh, this can be useful uh, if uh, someone is trying to uh, fry the UAV data or drone, uh, UAV, UAV or drone uh, in this area. I hope uh, we have some more uh, opportunity uh, to use the point cloud data uh, for uh, more real-time purposes. And next slide, please. And I would like to uh, introduce some kind of uh, project. Uh, I call it EV. Uh, this is a kind of subclass of OptoGeo, but uh, we are trying to combat Earth observation data, and uh, I. Yes, actually, uh, I convert it to, into vector tiles, and I also use uh, it with uh, other vector tile data. And because uh, I, yeah, I created this project because uh, I think uh, the Earth observation data is really hot topic and uh, have a lot of opportunity where, when we use it with vector tile data, especially map data. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, this. This is an example uh, of the data from JAXA, Japan, Japanese uh, Space Agency. And they provide high resolution land use, land cover data. And uh, yes, naturally, I uh, combine it with topography data. And uh, I think uh, this can provide some new uh, perspective uh, about uh, yes, land cover uh, of our area because uh, the combination of topography data and uh, uh, remote sensing data uh, can be uh, more uh, exciting to see. Okay, next please, next please. And the last one, yes, I would like to introduce a uh, tile service because uh, of our experience that we need to, of course, naturally have a good computing environment uh, if uh, we'd like to uh, produce vector tiles or host it or uh, optimize it. So uh, we are making some small project to uh, talk uh, work about the tile service, like in other uh, commercial products. And next slide, please. So yes, because uh, our project is the open source project uh, led by public organization, not a private company, uh, we would like to cover yes, the service, uh, sorry, service perspective uh, in a really better, no, not better, but uh, more free form, uh, free as in freedom. And we would like to cover two aspects, uh, not only tiling, but uh, also hosting. And uh, I would like to make uh, this uh, available to everyone who would like to have that tile service. And uh, yes, the next slide is the how uh, we can implement that kind of service. Uh, yeah, I use it, uh, I use the Raspberry Pi uh, to host a vector tiles. Uh, the left one is something I use uh, in the work from home environment, and we use it uh, in the our organization too. So the trick is that uh, I can connect a small hard disk and we can provide, we can host our vector tiles in a small computer. Yes, next price slide, please. And yes, uh, I'm. Uh, this is how it works, but yes, I can skip it uh, and to the next one. Uh, yes, uh, yes uh, 
can you go come go back? Uh, yes. The important thing is uh, I am uh, working with new partners. Uh, one is Japanese Antarctic Research Expedition, sixty uh, third with the wintering party because in Antarctica, uh, internet service is not so uh, really good. And uh, the uh, second partner is Furuhashi Laboratory in the Aoyama Gakuin University. And uh, I'm looking, I'm really excited uh, to work with our new partners. And uh, yes, yeah, next slide, please. And we are working uh, on GitHub. And uh, yes, uh, please uh, come to uh, the GitHub repository if you are interested in our project. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. That's all from uh, our presentation. So, uh, John, uh, uh, <laughs> you, we can go to the question and answer uh, if there is anything. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Arigato gozaimasu for the great presentation. Uh, so, there's a question in the chat, so I'm going to ask it. And please, um, the audience, feel free to, if you have any additional questions, just write it down so I can um, read it to the, the, the presenters here. So is there a single map style or can the map style be edited by third parties? There was the question in the chat. Um, you answered a little bit, but maybe more details. Can we have our own custom map style that we use that toolkit as well? Uh, yes, then let me go fast. Uh, from the, my experience uh, working in the uh, UN, uh, there is no uh, single styles and you can freely design your map style. And uh, as I said, uh, we already did this the vector type. Uh, so you can freely add your own style. And uh, using Hong Kong, uh, you can easily edit your style uh, with text files. Then you can combat, com compile a new style. Then uh, if you refer to that style, you will see new map. Uh, that's experience from me. So Hidenori, do you have anything to add? Thank you so much. Yes, uh, because uh, we are working on the base map, I, we think uh, we are using more complex uh, styles uh, than topo uh, sorry, thematic data. And we have a lot of colleagues or friends uh, working on the style issues. And uh, we are using uh, Hokon, but some of our colleagues are trying to use YAML so that uh, we can describe our style in a simpler way. So I think uh, we can introduce some uh, example how we can manage the style. And of course, uh, yes, uh, we, are, we welcome a new way to uh, do a better styling. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, Lorenzo Stupke is saying thank you and uh, saying it's very interesting use of Raspberry Pi. Um, um, I'm, I'm also uh, quite interested in the idea, and if I have a chance, I want to try it out. But um, I, I kindly, I kindly, please ask you to share the links if you can uh, through venue list for the audience to be able to uh, reach that. Yes, thank. You. Yeah, I, I would like to yes share okay. the URLs. So thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I think we don't have any questions from the audience for more. So, um, if you don't have any additional comments, um, we can we can finish up. Uh, let me let me just okay. add something. Uh, we had uh, some question about styling, and or uh, if you'd like to learn uh, more about styling, or if you'd like to make style file by yourself. Uh, please visit uh, our materials. Uh, don't afraid. If you are uh, beginners, it's okay because our materials is for beginners. You can run styling uh, together. So just please this exercise material. Then if you have question, uh, contact me or contact Hidenori. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Taro. Thank you, Hidenori, for the first presentation. Uh, for the audience, uh, feel free to get in touch uh, with them, find them in Venueless and try to have a chat. That's it if you have any further questions. So um, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for the presentation. And um, we are going to, in five minutes, Thank continue you. with the next presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Have a nice Thank day. Much. Have a good day.